What do you do when you can't go to your favorite summer destination but you miss the amazing flavors of Camden, Maine? Well, if you're like me, you start experimenting and you don't give up and you bring the flavors of New England to your kitchen. Today, I'm gonna be sharing how to make the most delicious, scrumptious, tasty, flavorful, moist, <laughs> moist <laughs> tuna cakes you've ever had. And later on in the Entrepreneur's Pantry, I'm gonna be talking about something that I do for my business and for my client's business, rapid testing and prototyping as a way for you to get massive results but I haven't to waste a lot of time. This is gonna be an amazing episode. If and only if you don't wanna miss out, then stick around. to my home and my kitchen for another episode of Perfect Monday's Entrepreneur's Kitchen, where you get to learn how to make amazing meals and how to scale your business with a lot more joy and a lot more purpose while working half the time. What a deal, all in one show. So there's quite a few ingredients. We're gonna start with breadcrumbs. We're gonna use anywhere from half a cup to a cup. I'll explain more on that later. We're gonna be using avocado oil because we're gonna be frying this and avocado oil has a higher burning point than olive oil. We're gonna be using red crushed pepper flakes, salt and pepper, two cans of tuna. Make sure that your tuna is sustainably sourced. This is sustainably sourced. This is pole cut. And then we're gonna be using eggs. These eggs are incredible. Also make sure that your eggs, every time you're cooking, they're fresh and preferably organic. We're gonna be using Worcestershire sauce. Holy shit, I said it right. Say that three times, Worcestershire sauce. Then we're gonna be using lemon juice and lemon zest because we're using the zest i want you to make sure that also you buy organic lemons unless you like to add a little pesticide to your to your recipe then that's completely on you i'm using fuji apples because they're crisp and they're sweet we're going to be using green onions or spring onions if you're british and we're going to be using mayo or mayonnaise <laughs> we're going to be using this little herb right here, parsley, Italian parsley. So we're gonna be chopping everything, the spring onions, we're gonna be doing them super thinly sliced and we're gonna be doing very small cubes of this as well. When you're prepping your food, do it with joy. This is where you start adding your love into your food. Spend some time doing this, play some amazing music, be present and let's get to it. So now that we took the time to get all the ingredients ready, we're gonna start mixing them. I took the time to shred the tuna. As you know, it comes compact in the can. This one was packed with water and this is dry now. I'm gonna be putting all the ingredients little by little. I have a few spoons here so I can keep test, tasting it as we go along. And the last thing I'm gonna put is the egg yolks because I wanna make sure that I can try this before we set this in the refrigerator for an hour. Let's go ahead and get started. So we have the tuna right now. The first thing that I'm gonna add is gonna be the mayo. This is about two chunky tablespoons. And this is part of what's gonna give it the moisture. Now, as a substitute for this, if you didn't wanna put that much mayo, you could also add a little bit of sour cream and a little bit of mayo and it will still do the trick and it doesn't have as much fat. Then I'm gonna put the lemon zest. Everything goes in. I'm gonna add the parsley. This is about three fourths of a cup once it's all chopped. 
and I'm gonna leave a little bit because I like to put just a little more on top once the cake is done. I'm gonna leave some side. I'm gonna add the Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna add the green onions. I'm gonna add the lemon juice. Now, as you can see, this apple is very finely chopped because I think it's gonna taste better. It's gonna look fancier. And I already added a little bit of lemon juice to this so it doesn't oxidize and it looks a lot better and crisp. So I'm gonna add the entire lemon juice. I'm gonna add the apple. We're gonna be adding just a tiny bit of salt, not too much, like I said, we're gonna be putting more when we, before we fry it. This is to taste. If you like to have a little bit of heat to your recipe, just add some of the red pepper flakes. And last but not least, we're gonna add about half a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm gonna leave a little bit because I wanna make sure if it gets a little too mushy, I'm gonna add more so it has a little more consistency. This is something where you want to make sure that it's moist, but it also has some structure so when you're frying it, it doesn't go all over the place. So I'm gonna just save a little bit of this until we start mixing. And then what you wanna do with very clean hands, of course, you wanna start mixing this with your hands. You can taste the crispness of the apple, the freshness of the Italian parsley. The flavor is pretty good, it's not too salty. And like I said, we're gonna be adding more salt. So I think for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the two egg yolks. Just add them in. And then you want to mix. And then when it's all mixed well, I'm gonna push it in so it starts compacting all the way. While this chills in the fridge, we're gonna be heading to the Entrepreneur's Pantry where we'll be talking about rapid testing, massive perfect action, and how to get your goals much faster. Don't close your eyes. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Pantry. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a concept that if you apply it, will transform your life and your business. And it's a concept of massive imperfect action rapid testing and prototyping. And for this concept to take place, there's two things that I wanna share with you up front. The first one is my definition of massive imperfect action. And my definition says that 70% is gonna be your new 100%. If you can tattoo this in your arm, you're gonna be a much happier camper and solve your business. Now, if you're someone who loves perfection, you're kind of shit out of luck. <laughs> However, no one thing. The value that you will create in your life and your business by moving faster is gonna be in orders of magnitude greater than what you would achieve if you get your concept or your product or your service to 80, 90, or 100% guaranteed. Now, the second thing that I wanna share with you is a concept of testing. And for me, testing and prototyping is all about asking a good question. This is a question that I made several years ago and write it down also, tattoo it in your arm if you want to, but it will also revolutionize your business. And this question is, what is the most effective, fastest, inexpensive, and fun way for me to get to a desired result? One more time, what is the most effective, fastest, inexpensive, and fun way for me to get to a desired result? Mention that I talk about fun, and I'll share why I say that in, uh, in just a little bit. But if you think about it, when you are wanting to reach a result, and your result, by the way, is not 100%. If you recall from our earlier definition of massive imperfect action, it means that it's 70%. I mentioned fun because there is an axis. I call it the axis of getting shit done. <laughs> and in the vertical axis, you have excitement. Excitement is at very, very top. And then as time goes by on the horizontal axis, then the excitement significantly drops as time goes by. And when time is going by and you're not taking massive action, if you're just thinking about something without really doing something about it, your level of excitement dies. How many times have you had an idea that is incredible at the moment and then just goes to shit? Well, basically, that's what I'm talking about. And how many friends do you have that have told you, oh my God, I had the idea of Uber 10 years before it existed. Well, guess what? These mofos actually got their shit together and they got their product out there probably by doing rapid testing and massive imperfect action. So the reason why I bring excitement is because if you can turn 
your actions into something that's actually fun is gonna transform your business. I once heard an amazing interview with Richard Branson when he was describing his businesses and how he runs all of them from his beautiful island in paradise working a few hours. Obviously he has a large team, but it didn't happen by accident, he created it. And one of the things that surprised me the most about the way that he described his businesses, and I'll never forget this, is he was talking about them as if they were a game, okay? When you turn your business into something fun and you turn it into a game, then it's pun intended, game over. Game over for everyone else who is just doing it for the buck or because they think they need to struggle. There's so many ways for you to add excitement and joy into your life. This is what this show is about. This is what my business is about. It's not just about getting shit done and making money. It's about enjoying your life. You deserve to enjoy your life. So how do you put massive and perfect action and testing and all these questions that I'm asking right now into practice? I'm gonna give you a real life example. I have a friend of mine who's super successful. Her business is worth about $40 million right now. And one time we were having a conversation. She shared with me something that she did in the realm of prototyping. There was a client of hers, a potential client who wanted to do something. And this is something that she was, it's a new service she wanted to offer. This person said, I am interested in this. And instead of just her just saying, okay, well, I don't have the product. I'll come back to you when I have it. Or instead of her saying, I'm gonna go develop it and then I'll start selling it, which is what most people do, she approaches a different way. Now, before I share how she did it, I want you to know that most entrepreneurs approach doing business in a super binary way. It's yes or no, black or white, zero or one. They either start spending money and time and energy behind it and then when it's great, 100% ready or 90% ready, they put it out to sell or they just think and envision and plot and they have this beautiful metaphorical <laughs> sunlit room with tea and crumpets where they are just thinking about it instead of doing something about it. This beautiful middle ground is what my friend did and what she did was something simple. Remember the question, what is the most effective, fastest, inexpensive and fun way to test this? Well, she had hired a designer and she developed these wireframes that resembled a lot of what the real app for this service would look like. Most people will say, I can envision things and uh, that's bullshit. Most people can't see past their nose when it comes to thinking about something that doesn't exist. It doesn't matter how good they are. It's just hard for people. That's why in real estate, if you're selling a home and you have furniture, it sells way better and faster than if you have an empty space because people can't see spaces that way. Anyway, so once she had this beautiful paper, a digital prototype, it wasn't really the real thing. It was the part of what this experience would be like. She presented it to her clients and her clients said, this is amazing. This is exactly what I've been looking for. When can I have it? So she charged him some good money and the cost of development was zero and she had a working new service that she could offer to other clients all because she asked a good question so two things that i want you to think about this week number one is when you're thinking about something that you haven't been able to do for a while i want you to think about what is your level of excitement for that product or service or thing in your life that you're stuck with most likely it's pretty dim and when you think about what is the level of perfection that i've been wanting this new idea to have, if it's past 70%, that might be perhaps why you're not doing it. So this week I want to go out there, ask a good question, test the shit out of life. And now let's get back to the kitchen to put together those delicious tuna cakes. Welcome back. We're gonna take an ice cream scooper and we're gonna make some little tiny balls. Now that we have these beautiful cakes all ready to go, we're gonna salt and pepper them on one side, and then we're gonna turn on the flame, put the avocado oil, and when it's hot, we're gonna start frying them, and we're gonna add the salt and pepper on the other side before we take them out. Middle of the spring 
that you wanted. So this is it. Look at the color on this beautiful, juicy, savory, sweet, salty, sour tuna cakes. Now, the way that I like to present this is I just take a little bit of parsley from my herbs and I'm gonna cut just a little, a small wedge of lemon. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna add it here. I like to sprinkle some additional parsley. So this is it. We're gonna try it. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lemon. Take a clean fork. Hijo de la ch <laughs> This is phenomenal. And I feel like Bill Murray in What About Bob when he was tasting the food and just moaning. This is soft and moist and delicious. This is truly exquisite. I wish you could taste it. It is very soft. It's a little bit sweet because of the apple. The top of it is perfectly browned. It is incredible. I'm gonna wrap this up by saying that this week I really hope that you can go out and do rapid testing, and prototyping, and massive and perfect action. I want you to experiment with your food. And until next time, love your life, love what you eat, and love your business. I hope this was helpful. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I bring out a new video. Now, if you're a woman entrepreneur and you want to scale your business with a lot more joy, and fun and purpose while working half the time. There's gonna be a link underneath the description of this video where we can connect and explore if we might be a good fit to work together. I have little pieces of ice in my fucking hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too cold for my teeny tiny hand. I don't know, I don't want this to fail. That's a great mantra. <laughs> That's a great what? Mantra. <laughs> <laughs>